testosterone and HGH Great question. naturally? Great question. Because you've got all these testosterone supplements, which are a waste of money. Waste of money. Especially heard. if they're in a capsule. If they're in a capsule, what they do is, or a pill, what they do is they put a trace of this and a trace of that. Okay, or they'll get a study that says that some article that says that they tested this herb and it boosted testosterone or something along those lines. Baloney, don't fall for it. Here's how you build testosterone. The first thing is stay away from sugar. Sugar is for getting fat and for getting lazy and for being domesticated. You understand? Testosterone is your primal hormone. This is why guys want it. It's a primal hormone. It makes you masculine. Sugar is domesticating. Does that make sense, Rob? This is why there's sugar everywhere. You know why the government subsidizes sugar? To domesticate us. We're domesticated through sugar. We're domesticated through bread. We're domesticated through grains. Staying away from that stuff is the best thing you could do to boost your testosterone. And the next best thing is you want to start to take in micronutrients that help the body make testosterone. And there's lots of them, and most of us are deficient in them. Zinc is probably the most important. And, and I've said this, I, I probably say it on every show, or at least every other show. 50 milligrams zinc picolinate. It's a must-have nutritional supplement. You're not going to get zinc from foods, great amounts of it. Vitamin E can help too, by the way. All your fatty, all your fatty nutrients are important for building testosterone, especially essential fatty acids, especially omega-3 essential fatty acids, but both. They're both important. So make sure you're using your ultimate EFAs. The B complex is unspeakably important for all hormones, especially vitamin B5. Pantothenic acid, which is a very underappreciated vitamin. So making sure you're using uh, you're using uh, uh, vitamin B5. Also, also uh, you might want to try uh, estrogen inhibitors, aromatase inhibitors, I should say, that keep your body from making estrogen. Testosterone is converted into the female hormone estrogen. So keeping uh, using what they call aromatase inhibitors, something like Chrysin, C H R Y S I N, might be helpful for you. Um, there's also another one called Tribulus, D-I-M, I-3-C. These are ways that you can keep, your est- keep testosterone from converting into estrogen. And they're not necessarily essential nutrients. So making sure you're on your healthy start pack, getting your Mighty 90 essential nutrients. Magnesium is also important. And then resistance training. Make sure you're using resistance training and combining whey protein with your resistance training. The combination of whey protein with your resistance training is a wonderful way to build muscle, which in turn will stimulate testosterone production. Likewise, creatine supplements. A couple other miscellaneous ones, arginine, amino acid arginine, is uh, very important. These are all for building muscle, which will help testosterone production. Arginine probably boosts testosterone on its own. Glutamine uh, also will help you build muscle. And then... uh, there's one more I was going to tell you about, which I totally forgot. But uh, those, are bu- those are a bunch of great strategies there for you. Most important, though, is keep your body fat low and keep your sugar intake down. Female hormone is made in body fat. I call this the Santa Claus effect. As our ta- testosterone drops, as men's testosterone drops, they become fat and jolly. You know what I'm saying? The, the stereotype, the fat, jolly old man, that's a sign of yep. estrogen superseding testosterone, and we don't want to be there. All right? Yeah, that sounds great. Thank you very much. Good deal. Ta- uh, yeah. Real quick, my mom's got a broken uh, broken ankle, and she's got a complex regional pain syndrome. Do you know anything yeah. about that? Yeah, yeah, it's inflammation around the nerve. It, all the things we just talked about. Oh, by the way, melatonin. That was the one thing I was thinking of before. Make sure you're getting That's your melatonin, melatonin for testosterone building. And okay. all the things we just talked about, everything we just talked about, all the nutrients, keeping your sugar down, zinc, magnesium, protein. She might want to throw in gelatin in the glucosamine capsules or also high hyaluronic acid capsules. Those are important for bone building. Uh, EFAs, everything we've, we've just talked about. It's an inflammatory condition around the break. All right, I'm going to motivate here, Rob. Thanks so much. God bless you, buddy. Good luck. All right, Dave in California. What's up? How you doing, man? Hey, thanks for all you do again, Ben. Thank, thank you, David. What's going all on? All right, I just wanted to know about uh, dandruff. What, what okay. For it. Dandruff is a, dr- uh, a con- uh, oily skin condition. People think it's a dry skin condition. It's actually a sign of oily skin. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, it's usually associated with oily skin and acne. They call it uh, seborrhea. Sometimes they'll call it seborrhea, which is a word for a lot of sebum produced. In any case, selenium, zinc, skin con- all the skin nutrients. Dandruff is a skin condition. What you're seeing with dandruff is you're seeing, under ordinary circumstances, our skin cells, whether they're on our scalp or whether they're on our face or anywhere, are dropping off one by one. So you don't see them because they're microscopic. When you have dandruff, the cells are not dropping off one by one because they're sticky. 
the fats are, it's a fat condition. The oils are making them sticky. The changes in fats are making these cells sticky, so they come off in flakes. A dandruff flake is made up of a bunch of skin cells that under ordinary healthy circumstances you wouldn't see. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because they're sticky. So you want to think about the stickiness, the oiliness, the fattiness. So focus on fats and fatty nutrients. Vitamin E, vitamin A, 20,000 IU of vitamin A, 400 IU of vitamin E. All your essential fatty acids, fat absorption, fat metabolism, correct digestive problems. One of the biggest reasons why we don't process our fats is because of dysbiosis, messed up gut bacteria. So using probiotics and all the things we just talked about for keeping the, the uh, gut healthy, the, the intestine healthy. And then the minerals, zinc and selenium are particularly important. In fact, Head & Shoulders dandruff shampoo is made with zinc. And Selsun Blue, the other dandruff, best-selling dandruff shampoo is made with selenium because zinc and selenium are important for dandruff, anti-dandruff. Now, we've used them in pharmacy. We've used zinc and selenium topically for dandruff, but it's not really a topical problem. It's an internal problem. So okay. using your ultimate selenium and using your zinc picolinate are other strategies as well. All the things you do for acne, you're going to do for dandruff, and dandruff and acne tend to go together. Mm, All right? Okay. So topical things aren't really worth it. Uh, for getting rid of the flakes, you know, you don't want the flakes to come off in the middle of a party. You know what I'm saying? So, so getting or, or work. So you want to get rid of the flakes, and you may get some benefits uh, from from topical, like head and shoulders or something like that. But the problem, of course, then is is if there's some you're, you're disrupting the flakes, so they may be caught in your hair. So you have to be really careful about that too. It's okay. an internal condition. That's the way to look at. It. Okay. Thank All right, you, buddy. Sir. Thank you, David. Take care, man. All right, uh, Stephen in California. We got lots of calls from California today. What's going on, Stephen? How you doing? Good morning, sir, and thank you for everything. Thank you. I have, a friend, I have a friend who is 64 years old, probably weighs about 175, 180, been diagnosed and being treated for a blood cancer called myeloma. Okay. All right. That's, uh, you know, that's a serious cancer. Any kind of cancers in the blood are very serious, obviously, because the blood goes everywhere. So it's... With all cancers, you got to clean the blood, but especially if you have blood cancer. That means you've got to be extremely careful what you eat, and the less food you eat, the better off you're going to be. Now, we talked yesterday a little bit about the kind of paradox between people losing weight when they're on, uh, when they have cancer and needing to gain weight, so they think they got to eat a lot of calories. No, you want to be utilizing the calories you're eating, and that means micronutrients. You want to be getting more bang for your buck. Steve, I'm out of time. It's a very big subject, uh, but basically you're talking about cleaning the blood using all the strategies we talk about here. Oxygenating the blood can help. You may want to consider hydrogen peroxide injectable. It's not really, you're past the point of nutrition for reversing the cancer, but you can use nutrition to help improve the way the guy feels, improve his energy levels, etc. And that's important, a healthy start pack in that case. If you want more specific information, call back on uh, Monday and we'll take you first up. I'm sorry, Steve, we just got to go. We're out of time. All right, thanks for listening to The Bright Side, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a wonderful awesome, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.